Perspective Shift, Unveiling Paradigms and Perceptions Navigating Christian doctrines can be overwhelming. Returning to biblical interpretation is vital for clarity and unity. Shifting perspectives to align with the Word of God brings authenticity to our faith. Let's seek truth together with open hearts and minds. Perspective Shift with Dare Akinsanya Hello everyone, my name is Dare Akinsaya and welcome to Perspective Shifts on Veiling Paradigms in Perceptions. In the last episode, we established from John chapter 6 that tests and trials often look alike and they can catch us off guard since we are not usually warned ahead of time of their impending visit. Even at that, we can still be prepared by inoculating ourselves with the Word of God that will help us sail through them. At the end of any trial season awaits a glorious reward that may swallow up any effects of the trial, all to God's glory. This week, we are returning to Matthew's account as we explore insight number 9 from the series. We will study Jesus' response and reaction and even his countenance to the same small resource that the disciples considered to be worthless. Today's anchor scripture is still going to be from the same Matthew 14 verse 18 that we explored in episode 7 where we said that we have all that we need we are looking at another dimension into that scripture. Matthew chapter 14 verse 18 He said, Bring them to me. And here is insight number 9. Nothing is too hard for God. In the vastness of the universe, amidst the complexities of life, and in the depths of our struggles, one truth remains steadfast, and it is, nothing is too hard for God. Throughout history and in the pages of scripture, we encounter countless examples of God's power, His sovereignty, and His boundless capabilities and faithfulness. A few examples include, number one, the creation as a testimony of God's power. Genesis 1 1 In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The very act of creation stands as a testament to God's unlimited power. With a sequential series of pronouncements, He brought the entire universe into existence demonstrating his authority over all things. And number two is boldness that exemplifies God's sovereignty. Jeremiah thirty-two twenty-seven, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? From parting the Red Sea to raising the dead, the Bible is replete with accounts of miraculous interventions that defy human comprehensions. These miracles serve as reminders that nothing is beyond the reach of God's mighty hand. Luke one thirty seven, For with God, nothing will be impossible. God says what He means, and He means what He says. Embedded within God's promises include the assurance that He is able to fulfill every word that He speaks. His faithfulness knows no bounds and His power knows no limits. And number three is testimonials that ensues from human encounters with God's provisions. Psalms 46 verse 1 God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. At some points in our lives, 
we may have experienced moments where God's intervention seemed impossible, yet he made provision. He even protected us. And better still, he delivered us beyond our own expectations. These encounters serve as reminders that God's ability to act on our behalf knows no constraints. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations 3 Jesus knew God so well, and that's why it was easy for him to respond with utmost boldness when he said to the disciples, Bring them to me. That is, bring it on. Quite a simple reaction to a dire need. The reaction is simple, but it is not simplistic. We may be aware of how Jesus reacted to chaotic situations that can give many people heart attacks. Nowhere in scriptures was it ever recorded that Jesus ever panicked. While his disciples were concerned for their dear life, when a storm hit them, Jesus was enjoying his nap without any commotion. His disciples thought he was carefree and rebuked him. However, Jesus responded to them and demonstrated to them that they were rebuking the wrong thing. He turned and rebuked the storm instead, showing them that they were supposed to be rebuking the storm and not all the vain words that they were uttering at him. Very simple words, peace be still, but they were as powerful and as potent to make miracles happen. How many times have we rebuked God while going through tough times? We are prone to telling him how could he be so comfortable watching us and doing nothing for that matter when all the demons and principalities in the entire universe are having a field day at our expense. I have been there too and I can imagine God shaking his head in disappointment and saying, O oh, ye of little faith. Before proceeding any further, it is pertinent to clarify simple versus simplistic. Acting by faith does not imply that we should be simplistic. It just simply means that faith shouldn't be perceived as a rocket science. It is simply putting our trust in God and do whatever he has taught us to do regarding any situation. Being simplistic is entrusting everything, including our own responsibilities, in God's hands. When he hasn't asked us to do so, I cited an example in Yes and Amen, using the school system as a reference. When a teacher gives a student an assignment, probably to do from home, and the student goes back to the teacher and says, Teacher, here is my assignment. Please do them for me. And also, while at it, please grade them as well. In other words, being simplistic is tantamount to being irresponsible. There are times it tells us to take a back seat and just watch. But for the most time, he expects us to exercise the authority that he has bestowed on us over challenges and speak the outcome that we desire. The disciples in their early stage panicked during the storm and started shouting that they were going to drown in the name of saying what the situation was and even had the audacity to accuse Jesus of being carefree. Many of us do the same thing as well in this generation despite knowing these stories. Many times we wonder how unrealistic the disciples or Israelites were. But the fact remains that as it was then, so it is still now among Christians for that matter. God is not blind or deaf. 
and he can see when we are in dire situations. Rather than speaking life into what we really desire, we do the reverse instead by speaking life into the situation we want to get rid of. He knows more than we will ever know. And oftentimes, he sets boundaries that the principalities and powers cannot cross. If not for his intervention, we will not even be standing, let alone be accusing him of wrongdoing. This is unbeknownst to us, of course, because we keep going back and telling him what he already knows, regurgitating the experiences that we are facing and telling him, oh God, can you see? Of course, he can see. He knows about it even before it happens. And he knows what the end of it is thereof. It is bad enough that we are wasting valuable time. Instead of addressing the situation, we start pouring out unnecessary information that will not change any situation for us. And worse still, we add salt to injury by aggressively trying to displease God. He knows and understands when we are in dire situations and he therefore encourages us to be courageous in his might, not being simplistic in a hopeless surrender, but to simply put our yoke on him and then step out in faith and execute whatever instructions he may have given unto us. Stepping out in faith is what allows us to receive and operate in the peace that Jesus said he has left with us. Hebrews 4.11 Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. It is not a coincidence that the Bible emphasizes that we should trust in the Lord with all our heart and might and not lean on our own understanding. He says, in all our ways we should acknowledge Him, knowing that He has our back through any situation that we find ourselves in, gives Him pleasure and makes our faith, faith yield results that we desire. Jesus understood this too well. That's why he was not perturbed by the small resource that they got from the lad's meal. That's why his reaction to the seemingly insignificant resource that his disciples presented to him was very simple and prompted him to speak in boldness, knowing that God is capable of doing anything that nothing is impossible for God. And thanks to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we have been redeemed and reconciled to God. But how much of the renewal of our mind have we adopted from his teachings? Throughout scripture, we see numerous examples of God's immense power and sovereignty at work. When Jesus responded to the disciples, bring them to me, he showcased a calm and confident trust in God's ability to provide. He has seen God make provisions in situations that seemed hopeless for the Israelites in the desert. He provided manna for them, millions of them. So what is 5,000 or when people say 15,000, let's call it 50,000. What is 50,000 compared to 2 million or 4 million based on the account of how many people Moses led out of Egypt? He does not forget the acts of God that he has seen unlike us humans. When we forget quickly and switch from praises to murmuring to crying back to praising God when we get some encouraging words of hope, and then we sustain it for a little while and then roller coaster back into complaining and grieving. To round up this episode, the story of the feeding of the multitudes and Jesus' reaction to the limited resources presented to him teaches us that God can transform any insignificant resource into the miraculous 
when we surrender it to him. Faith is straightforward and its hallmark includes unwavering trust in God and obedience to his guidance. By recognizing God's limitless power and having the courage to act on his instructions, we can experience his miraculous provision and interventions in our lives. May God give us the grace to operate like Jesus while he was on this world. May we receive the power to become true sons and daughters of the Most High and experience dominion over all circumstances around us in Jesus' mighty name. And with that, we have come to the end of this week's episode. Please connect with me via akinsd.com forward slash podcast or through my YouTube podcast channel. Thanks for all the comments and testimonials and please keep them coming still. You never know who your testimony or comment will encourage. I hope this has been of some value to you and I want to thank you for listening. Have a great week ahead and remember, Jesus is Lord of all. Hallelujah.